Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel and Forever Free Ministries. Who is Michael the Archangel? Some say Michael the Archangel is a mighty angel like Gabriel. Others say, no, it's Jesus himself. Why were Michael and Satan disputing, arguing over the body of Moses in Jude verse 9? What were they arguing about? Is Michael the only archangel? Where does the Bible mention Michael the Archangel and is there more than one Archangel? This Bible topic has everything to do with the last days. As a matter of fact, this topic is right out of the explosive, fascinating prophetic books of Den Revelation. Remember our motto, if it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. So we will go right to the inspired Word of God for clear, solid answers to your questions about the true identity of Michael the Archangel. Stay tuned. Okay, so just before we dive into this very important topic, I want to get into your hand, first graphic here, free ebook. Click on the link below. A donation is appreciated but not required. We really want to get this into your hand, and uh, thousands have requested this free ebook on the book of Revelation, unlocking the prophecies for the last days. Also, you can email us your Bible questions and or your prayer requests at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. So, in addition to that, if you would like a link to 50 things to do on the Sabbath, all you need to do is email us. That's all you need to do at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Also, you can call for prayer or you can call with Bible questions, 833-211-4878, all right? The Archangel is coming for sure. As a matter of fact, a number of times in scripture, the Bible speaks of a heavenly being by the name of Michael, right out of scripture, right in the word of God. At least once in the little book of Jude, he is described as Michael the archangel, where he is depicted as contending with Satan over the body of Moses. Why? Because Michael the archangel is going to raise Moses to life and take him to heaven. So they are arguing here. Obviously, Michael the archangel wins that argument. Moses is resurrected and is taken to heaven and where he is to this day. So we continue. Many Christians believe this individual to be simply one of the highest angels in heaven, like Gabriel, for example, in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel 9, and Luke 1 and verse 19. Now we're going to go look tonight, right now, at six fast biblical facts about this heavenly being, and then see what these biblical facts tell us about its identity. So, number one, the word archangel means ruler of the angels. Matter of fact, in the Greek language in which the New Testament was written, the word archon in the Greek means ruler, ruler. So, an archangel is a ruler of the angels, just as a bishop, for example, is the ruler of the bishops under his authority. Now, Michael, therefore, is not a created angel. I repeat, Michael, therefore, is not a created angel. Many mis make a mistake about that, but rather the one who rules the angelic host, rules the angels. So, it's like the President of the United States being Commander-in-Chief of the armed forces of his country, but that doesn't make him a soldier. So. In both the Old and the New Testaments, the word angel doesn't always identify those heavenly beings that serve God, whom we generally think of as angels. As a matter of fact, the word angel in the Greek is angelos, that really means messenger. And what does a messenger bring? Message. So this word sometimes is used in the Bible with reference to Jesus as angel of the Lord. We'll get into that more in a moment here. When the angel comes to the parents of Samson to tell them of his birth, Manoah asked the angel, quote, What is your name that when your words come to pass, we may honor you? Judges chapter 13, verse 17. The angel then replied, quote, 
Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. Zoom in on that word wonderful there in verse 18. Well, this name wonderful is one of those given to the promised Messiah in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 where the Messiah is called wonderful counselor. All right, the Prince of Peace. So it is for this reason that this angel permitted Manoah and his wife to worship him there in Judges 13 and verse 20, which is something an ordinary created angel would not accept, never. As we see in the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And then there's another scripture I want to read to you that goes along with this. In Revelation 22 and verse 9, we read, Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren the prophets and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. So immediately we see the angel telling John, don't worship me, don't worship angels, worship God alone. We continue, we continue. And so this is very important. Who has his own angels? Who is the leader of all of the angels in heaven? Michael, point number two. Michael is the one described in scripture as leading the fight against Satan and his angels during the original rebellion in heaven. Revelation chapter 12 speaks of this first conflict in the history of the universe as follows. And this is very, very important. I'll go ahead and read this to you. It's right here in my Bible. And in Revelation chapter 12, we read this. This is very, very powerful. Revelation chapter 12, looking here at uh, verses 7 to 9. Very powerful. The Bible says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Notice it says here, Michael and his angels, and it says the dragon and his angels. So we're talking about armies of, of, of Jesus, of Michael the archangel, and armies of the dragon. You see the contrast in the leaders. Who's the ultimate leader on God's side? Jesus. Who's the ultimate leader uh, of the demonic host, of the fallen angelic host? That's uh, Lucifer, uh, Satan, the devil, the fallen angel, the dragon, as it's depicted here. And it says here, they did not prevail, nor was a place found for, uh, for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his, his angels were cast out with him. So the Bible is very clear indeed that Michael has his angels and the dragon has his angels. Now here's the good news. Two thirds of the angelic hosts remain faithful to God. So two thirds of the angelic hosts that were created, two thirds of them are faithful with Michael the archangel. One third rebelled and they're under the banner of the dragon. All right, let's keep going, everybody. So here we go. So war broke out in heaven, as I read. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. We're in a cosmic conflict, everybody. So Michael is obviously depicted in this passage as the leader of the good angels who stayed true to God in this titanic uh, struggle and warfare. So we saw how Michael is called the archangel in the ninth verse of the little book of Jude where Michael appears in contention with Satan over the body of Moses because he doesn't want to see Moses resurrected to life. So here again, it is Michael, as in Revelation 12, who carries the fight to the great adversary of God and man. So point number three, Michael is described in the Bible as the great defender of God's people on earth. 
The Old Testament book of Daniel, powerful book of Daniel with lots of rich prophecies, is the first place in the Bible where we find this being mentioned. As a matter of fact, he is first described in Daniel chapter 10 as one of the chief princes there in Daniel chapter 10 and verse number 13. In Daniel 9.25, this is very significant because only one heavenly being in the book of Daniel is described as a prince, and that is the Messiah, Jesus, according to Daniel 9.25. Look here, everybody. So I want you to notice that our motto is if it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. We simply want to go with the Word of God. Don't believe Mark Fox unless Mark Fox can back it up with the Word of God, the irrefutable, the irrefutable evidence of Scripture. No, this is unbreakable, unshakable, immutable Word of God. I love the Bible and I hope you do too. Let's keep going, everybody. So here we go. So another verse makes this point even plainer toward the end of the book of Daniel. Daniel 12, verse 1, powerful scripture. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Notice Michael is standing up in defense of God's people. That is powerful. That is encouragement. Number four, the Bible tells us that the one mediator between God and the human family is Jesus Christ. This gives us a better idea of who is being described here because another verse in the Bible tells us who in fact is the one mediator between God and humanity. Well, I'll tell you what, the Bible makes it very clear, the Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, he said that there's one mediator, not two, not three, there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So Paul made it very crystal clear. There's just one mediator. And so not Mary, not Joseph, not, not, not anyone. There's only one mediator and that is Jesus Christ. Let's keep going everybody. So we notice here as we continue in the first epistle to Timothy, the apostle Paul declares, I'm repeating now, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So we keep going. So if Michael, according to the book of Daniel, is the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, Daniel 12, 1, and if Jesus Christ is the one mediator between God and men, 1 Timothy 2, 5, it makes sense to believe that Michael and Christ refer to the same divine being. Very, very simple. Number five. When Jesus comes back at his second coming, the Bible says he descends with the voice of the archangel, clear in scripture. In one of Paul's epistles, the identification of Jesus with Michael becomes very clear. In describing our Lord's second coming, the apostle writes, and I'll quote it, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's keep going. So in one of Paul's epistles, this identification is very, very clear. So if Jesus descends from heaven, with the voice of the archangel, as I quoted in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, and 18. So if Jesus descends from heaven with the voice of the archangel, who else but Christ could this archangel be? So, in the book of Revelation, we again find a description of our Lord's coming, this time at the head of his angelic hosts. He, Christ, was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. That's the armies of heaven. Amen. So Jesus, in other words, is the commander in chief of the armies of the heavenly angels. That's why he is called Archangel, the ruler, the leader, the commander of all angels. Not because he is a created, created being like those he commands, but because this is the exalted position he occupies as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
Only one being in the Bible is called an archangel, and that is Michael. The evidence of Scripture forces us to identify this being with none other than Jesus himself. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. Number six, the commander-in-chief of the heavenly angels, heavenly armies, is depicted in the Bible as accepting worship that belongs only exclusively to God. When the one identified as the captain of the Lord's hosts appeared to Joshua before the battle of Jericho, Joshua bows before him in worship, Joshua 5 verses 14 and 15. So if this being were just another created angel, he would have forbidden Joshua to do this, just as the angel in the book of Revelation twice forbade the apostle John to bow in worship before him in Revelation 19, 10, Revelation 22, verse 9. So, as it, but in the case of Manoah and his wife in the story of Samson in Judges 13, 20, the fact that the captain of the Lord's host accepted Joshua's worship means it was God himself, the second person of the Godhead who in fact appeared. So, who is the prince in the book of Daniel as we've discovered? Isaiah's prophecy about the Messiah in Isaiah 9 verse 6 reveals one of the key names he says that would apply to the Messiah is Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9 verse 6. So the first time the name Michael is mentioned is in Daniel chapter 10 verse 13 and Michael is mentioned more in Daniel than in any other book in scripture. Daniel 10 13, Daniel 10 21, Daniel 12 and verse 1. So in all three references he is called a prince, your prince, the great prince. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days and behold Michael one of the chief princes came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia, Daniel 10, 13. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince, Daniel 10, 10 verse 21. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble uh, such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And at that time, every people, every your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book, Daniel 12, verse 1. So the Bible makes it very clear that Messiah is the prince there in Daniel 9, 25, the Messiah that would come to Jerusalem and uh, the Messiah is the prince. So this Michael that stands up is the great prince, the prince of peace, Jesus Christ himself. So who alone is worthy of our worship? Jesus. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for, for us or for our adversaries? Joshua 5, 13 to 15. So he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, who's the commander? The Lord Jesus himself. I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? My friends, he was bowing before Jesus himself. Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua 5, 13 to 15. My friends, who is the commander? that is receiving worship. No angel would ever receive that worship. No holy angel would ever receive that. It is Jesus himself. Who appeared to Joshua? Jesus himself. And so, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw, he turned aside to look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand 
is holy ground. Exodus 3, 1 to 5. So who appeared to Moses? None other than Jesus. Who did Moses bow before? None other than Jesus. Who refused worship? The angels. The angels said, no way, don't bow down and worship us. So who has his angels? Who is the leader of all the angels? Jesus. There's Michael and his angels versus dragon and his angels. Who comes with Jesus at his second coming? This is powerful. I want to read this scripture to you. Look here, everybody. This is in uh, Matthew, in Matthew uh, chapter 24 and verse 31. The Bible says here, and he, Jesus, will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So the Bible makes it very clear. The Lord Jesus comes with his angels. Let's keep going. So I want you to notice, we go back to the screen. So who comes with Jesus at his second coming? His angels who will come with him at the second coming of Christ. Praise the Lord. So what is the name of the person? who is in charge of all the heavenly angels, I repeat, it's Jesus. Who is the commander of the army of the Lord? It is Jesus. Who, who is Michael that has his angels? It is Jesus. What is the name of the person who is in charge of all the heavenly angels? I repeat, I repeat, it is Jesus. Whose voice awakens the righteous dead at the second coming of Jesus Christ? For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, that's the voice of Jesus with the, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together at the second coming with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Where are we going to meet the Lord? In the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now I want to read here one more quick scripture. Look here, everybody. So look here in John chapter 5, it's, uh, 28 and 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, Jesus said, in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. There's John 5, 28, 29, verse 29. And come forth. They're going to hear his voice. Come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life at the second coming. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. And that's after the millennium when the wicked are resurrected. So when Jesus comes, resurrection of life. At the end of the millennium, Revelation 20, resurrection of damnation. Let's keep going, everybody. We're almost done. So I want you to notice very clearly Jesus said that all who are in the graves are going to hear his voice and they're going to come forth in resurrection of life or the resurrection of condemnation. So these two verses in the Bible are speaking about the same event with the same voice, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Who alone will raise the dead uh, to eternal life when Jesus comes again? It's Jesus himself. Whose voice awakens the righteous dead? Jesus himself. Who appeared as the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament? Jesus himself. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. Who is this angel of the Lord in Genesis 31, verse 11? Jesus himself. Who did Jacob wrestle all night with in Genesis chapter 32? It was the Lord Jesus himself. So who appeared as the angel of the Lord? All through the Bible, it's about Jesus. Who stands for us? Who stands up for us? None other than Jesus. Look here, everybody. I've got some good news for you. Jesus intercedes for you. Jesus stands for you. Jesus is for you, not against you. If God be for us, who can be against you? Now I'm here to tell you that God led you to watch this broadcast, to watch this video. And I want to make an appeal. If you would like to say, Jesus, I want to be baptized. Go ahead and type it in the comment section. I want to be baptized. As a matter of fact, I want to encourage you to call us if you're interested in baptism or you have prayer requests or you would like a link to a Sabbath keeping church near you, call us 833-211-4878, 833-211-4878 or email us at amazingprophecies at gmail.com, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. You can also text us, text the word Bible 
to the number 74121. Text the word Bible to 74121. We want to hear from you. We have a staff. We have a prayer team, a prayer team that will pray over your prayer requests. We want to hear from you. Once again, call us 833-211-4878 or email us at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook group called Memorizing God's Word Together. Hope you can join that group, Memorizing God's Word Together in Facebook. Also another Facebook group called The Joy of the Sabbath. All right, join us there. We have a couple thousand in that group. And so join us there. That's uh, Joy of the Sabbath there on Facebook group. If you would like to receive our eBooks, for example, the book of uh, uh, Mark of the Beast, this book called Mark of the Beast, or the book uh, on Revelation, all you need to do is click on the link below and you'll be able to download the eBook. You can give a donation if you want. You don't have to give a donation, but if you want, you can give one at that time as well. I hope you can stand with us, pray for us, stand with us, connect with us. I wanna pray, Father in heaven, Thank you for blessing this broadcast. I pray that every single person would leave a comment below telling you that they trust you, Lord. Maybe they want to be baptized. Help them to communicate with us. Email us, text us, call us, and to help them find a Sabbath-keeping church. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, just bless all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, I hope you like this video. Go ahead and click on the like button because that helps YouTube to recommend our videos if you like it. And also share it with your, uh, with your friends and so forth. We have many videos that relate to uh, heaven, that relate to the second coming of Christ, the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, and a host of other topics. Hope you subscribe to our channel called Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus loves you.